All right, we are on the cloud. I'm really turning on my moderator voice now. And on <laughs> to you, Danny. Scene <laughs> on. <laughs> All righty. Can you folks see my screen? Yes. Okay, yes. I'm skeptical because it doesn't have the green line around it like it normally does. All righty, I'll just put that over there. Cool. Okay, so. Um, Yes, uh, just to recap, since we just started recording, um, Mastodon is getting a lot of interest at the moment because people are looking for Twitter alternatives right now. Um, if you want to think about Mastodon as an open source Twitter clone and just go about your business as, as, you, as you would do on Twitter otherwise, you can kind of stop listening now and go and try it out. That's, that's fine. Um, as Daniel mentioned before, it does have a kind of different philosophy underpinning it. So instead of there being one centralized um, Twitter server, um, there is currently, I think hundreds, could theoretically be an infinite number of individual um, instances of Mastodon running on different servers. And the neat thing about that is that it means that a um, an individual server can have its own policies. So um, just to give you a quick look at a server. So I am on Fosterdon, which is, if I spell it correctly, um, it is a uh, open software based server. But when I go to, so I'm signed in already. So when I came here, it, it looks a lot like Twitter. And you'll see that I'm following people who are not on Fosterdon. So this person, uh, oh yeah, I should probably add a little warning. This is my real um, my real account. I haven't set up a, a fake account for showing people. Maybe I should do that at some point. But so if we see anything kind of um, untoward, my apologies in advance. I follow real people and they post unpredictable things. Um, so uh, I was just using this one as an example. So this person, uh, Darius Kazemi, is on a server called friend.camp. Um, I don't know anything about that server, but I must have followed him at some point. And if we have a look at friend.camp, let's see what comes up. So I can show you a little bit about this server. Um, so this instance is closed. It's not accepting new people at the moment. Um, and it's running a system called Hometown, which is adapted from Mastodon. Um, the thing that underlies um, all of this, and Danny, you probably know more about this than I do, but um, is a system um, called Activity Pub, I believe. And this um, runs what people refer to as the Fediverse, and Mastodon is one piece of software that links into this kind of standardized protocol. Um, so I can see that there's only 98 users on this on this particular um, uh, version of Mastodon and they're not accepting new people. So this is probably just a little kind of um, friends only thing. I can see, so some instances have allowed you to look at what's, oops, if I, again, if I spell it right, you can have a look at the public feed of FriendCamp. Nope, not for these folks. They must be pretty locked down and private and that's okay. Um, I probably came across this person by somebody um, boosting, uh, to use Twitter terminology, it would be retweeting, uh, boosting one of their pieces. And so I must have liked what it was and followed that person. Um, or in fact, I just see that actually, I haven't followed that person. Somebody that I do follow has boosted, um, boosted that post. So it's all, it's all interconnected. Um, immediately when people think of Mastodon as having hundreds of individual servers, they think, oh, kind of walled garden, you can only see the people that you interact with. And it's really not like that. Um, it means that you can limit the people that you see, but it's not limited inherently. Um, what do I mean by you can limit the people you can see? You can block individual people if I decide that actually I don't like this person, I, they post things that I don't like, I can mute them or block them, um, I could report them. Then that report will go to the individual server and then the content moderation policies that will be applied to that server will be dependent on, on the rules.
tools for that server. Um, at a higher level, so this is the about page for Fostodon. And so these are the server rules. Do not use slurs or racist, sexist, sexist homophobic, transphobic, ableist, or otherwise discriminatory or hateful jokes, etc. Um, I'll let folks who are interested in this read through at their own time. The important thing about this is that this is written by a human or the humans that set up this server. Um, that in the simpler case, simplest case, like somebody has this server running in their basement and they have set it up to have these rules. And you can choose which server you want to be on. You can move from server to server if you decide that actually later you don't like the rules that are on this server. Um, and that means that you can kind of cultivate the community at a community level. It's always going to be much smaller, um, much smaller than a kind of single big Twitter. As part of that, the person that runs the server can block whole other servers. So um, this server, for example, has blocked um, nsfw.social and therefore the reason is adult content that contravenes our code of conduct. So that means that from my account, I cannot follow people who are on this server. And this list has got smaller since the last time I checked, which I think is good. There was a few servers on here that were, uh, it was unclear exactly why they were blocked. And so I think maybe they've gone back through and, um, and clean that up a little bit. Um, when this is limited servers, interesting, suspended servers. Okay. So there's different levels of this. I had not clocked on to that previously. That is interesting. Okay. Um, so that is done at the server level. So that kind of is a fairly sweeping, uh, you could say, protection of me from things that my server operator thinks I won't want to see. Okay. Um, the next thing I wanted to show folks is that um, it is supported by individuals. So people uh, donate money to be able to run this server, either through buying stickers or setting up uh, Patreon subscriptions. And that pays to keep the server running. For Fosterdon specifically, if there is excess money in that account at the end of the month, they run a vote and donate it to, um, they run a vote with a short list of other um, open software projects and then donate the remaining balance to those projects, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and the final thing I wanted to show people for people who are just kind of like dipping their toe anxiously into, um, into Mastodon is this tool called moa.party. There are other tools available, um, but this is a way to cross post either from Twitter to Mastodon, from Mastodon to Twitter or both. And there are evolving social norms around what is polite behavior about cross posting. Some people on Mastodon get very annoyed if you cross post from Twitter to Mastodon because they're like, I left Twitter. I don't want to see things from Twitter on my timeline. I don't like that. I will block you if you do that. And that is for them to decide. Um, but this is a tool that exists. And I think it is a valuable tool for people who are just uh, dipping their feet into Mastodon. And that is currently what the Turing Way has set up. Uh, my understanding is that most of the content on the Turing Way social media feeds is posted to Twitter and then it gets cross posted automatically to Mastodon. And okay, I think that is that is my spiel.